Pickman's model is the title character of one of H.P. Lovecraft's short stories. And it's a demonic, underworld, sewery kind of monstrous uh, creature. And I really wanted to go for something that was genuinely horrific with this piece. I started again with a PVC uh, framework, which was actually a leftover framework from a first attempt on another project. Built up most of the forms with... Uh, cardboard, crumpled paper, and um, made sure this time that I made the base really, really strong first. One of the things I really wanted to make sure I tried to get right on this one was the pose. He's described in the short story as having that look of sort of just being spotted and ready to attack kind of thing. So I wanted a, an off-kilter, twisty kind of pose, and I think uh, I, that one turned out really, really well. Again, in terms of the build-up on this one, it was fortifying it from the ground up again. Uh, the legs were quite a bit thinner than they probably should have been. I did wind up adding a brace in the ankles, and I wanted to try something specific with the head shapes and functions. I kind of trick myself sometimes by doing things in a way I know I shouldn't. One of the things I wanted to include was a severed head, which is described in the short story as well. This was an old Halloween skull. I, I reworked quite a bit. And again, with not just paper mache, here you see a cloth mache I added. Um, uh, there's some paper clay work on it, so it's a lot of different materials on this one to pull it together fairly quickly. One of the things that was challenging about this was I wanted it gruesome and graphic, but I really didn't want to push the bloody aspect of it too much, uh, even though it has to be sort of torn up. So painting it became critical, so I went with a more sort of um, older gangrene colored kind of uh, piece was happy the way that came out as well. It's horrific without being splattered and dripping with blood. Too much anyway. <laughs> One of the things I tr wanted to be able to do with Pigment's model was look down this cavernous mouth. So I actually built the mouth separately and, and it literally slotted right into place here. So I, this was done with paper mache, pulp and things like this. And so it went quite a ways in there Going up the, the figure on this, on Pickman's model, was interesting because of the texture choices I had to make on it. Normally I had a lot of specifically reptilian uh, or very, very defined textures, and this was more about a lot of texture, but also more wrinkly, saggy flesh in, in, in some points, much more sort of um, transparent flesh in some areas. But I love doing texture. I love doing heavy texture. And so there's even a lot more on it on this than there probably should have been. But it was fun. The eyes are simply made out of glass blobs, uh, craft blobs. The teeth are cold porcelain, a great material to work with for teeth. Uh, and then just building up the head and face was a really interesting process for me because I did have to change it and shift it and, and get the balances really right to make it look believable, strange, and scary. One of the great things about paper mache pulp is that it dries to a really twisty, desiccated look. So the hands came out really, really well for that. Along the way, I decided he really did need a tail. The, re the reason I hadn't put a tail on him earlier was that it just wouldn't fit through a doorway. So I had to make the tail a piece that literally slid on and slid off. What was nice about the tail is that I gave it enough of a, a swoop so that it really accented the, the pose quite well. 
I was very, very happy the way that worked out. And here you can see I added more forms to the head, even after it was already sculpted. And they gave the head a lot more of a definition that it, than it had previously. So once I was really happy with all of the detail work, all the paper mache pulp work, and the form was working, the tail was working, uh, I had the base covered as well as I wanted. I added some stones, paper mache leftovers actually. And then the piece was sealed with a, an acrylic and then it was primered with house primer and then the paint went on. I didn't want it to get too airbrushy, so I wanted uh, a much more of a splotchy feel to it. So I went in and did a lot of washes with brushes and sponges to break it up and give it that really uneven color tone. Obviously accenting uh, certain areas with the red uh, for the intensity. And I, pr I proceeded very, very slowly on this one color-wise because this was a paint scheme that could go very wrong very quickly. I went in and I added a lot of sores and just things, something you would think some creature that lived in the sewers would really have. Really disgusting stuff. And that was ongoing. I just kept adding here and there and slowly built the intensity up higher and higher to maintain the color balances as I went. Once I had my reds and my yellows balanced out, I went in and started taking the tones down, adding a little green, and then going in for some definition with the greens and the blacks. And the color was really critical on this one because I wanted it to really, really carry a lot of the character, not just add to the forms. So there's a lot of splotchiness, there's a lot of raw flesh look to it very horrific mouth coloring and as you can see blood all over the base uh, so there's a lot of suggestion of bloody horror without a lot of actual blood anywhere except on the base one thing I did was to test the figure out with a lot of changes in lighting to see that the forms were still working, the colors weren't distracting. And uh, once I knew and felt that this figure was really well balanced, I decided I was going to add some uh, mangy hair on it to give it even more of that unhealthy look. This is all a, 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 a synthetic hair called Kanekalon. As you can see, it was adding goo and glop at the same time. But the Kanikalon hair went on very easily and very nicely and gave me that thin, irregular hair look. And I was really, really, really happy with what it added to the character in terms of just that dirty, disheveled uh, feel.